Has this ever happened to you? Ever been stuck on the trail? Well, today we're going to show you how to install a winch and winch mount on your Flares Razor 1000. The first step is to remove the front wheels and tires and a bumper if you have one installed. We've already done so. So we're going to jump right in and disconnect the shock from the A-arm. Just pick up on the A-arm, remove the bolt, and we're going to tie our shock up out of the way. And you'll only want to do this on the driver's side. Next, we're going to loosen the brake line and then rotate it away from the differential. Just one turn is usually good. And you'll just want to push it back just like that. And then tighten it back up. Next, we're going to grab our winch mount. We're going to mount it in the machine and just like this with the lip facing towards the rear and then this portion face, facing towards the front. We're just going to pull our brake lines and everything out of the way. And start pushing it through. We'll have to wiggle everything around a little bit just to get everything to line up properly. Once you have it lined up, you're going to grab your hardware. It's going to be the same from the front to the rear and the left to the right. We're going to install it. So this bolt is facing this way for the rearmost hole. So it'll go in just like this. Then we're going to come from the back side with one of our nylock nuts. Go ahead and thread it on and get it started. We're going to do the same thing on the front side, except our screw is going to come from the front to the back. So it'll sit in there just like this. And then we'll start our nut. Next, we're going to be installing our Fairlead adapter. There's a couple different ways you could orient these depending on what winch you're installing. We're installing a 4,500 pound winch today. So we're going to angle the bracket just like this. If you're installing a 5,000, it'll be the same way. If you're installing a 3,500, you'll angle them just like so. So we're going to use our factory hardware. Just like this. Do the same thing for the opposite side. Once the fair lead adapter is installed to the machine, we're going to grab the provided fair lead that comes in the winch kit. We're going to go ahead and install it, making sure that we have a washer going up against the fair lead and we have a lock washer going up against the head of the Allen headed screw. So we're going to install our screw on the recessed side of the fair lead, slide it into the hole, take one of the provided nuts, we're going to go ahead and get it started. Then using a six millimeter Allen and a 14 millimeter wrench, we're going to go ahead and fully tighten the hardware. Now we're going to install our Fairlead grill using the factory hardware. You just want to make sure that you line up the notches, push it up into place. Get your hardware started, and then just go ahead and fully tighten it. Next, we're going to install our Super ATV 4,500 pound winch from the driver's side of the machine. We want to make sure that the terminals are aiming towards the passenger side. We're just going to slide it right in here. You may have to pick up on the radiator hoses just a little bit. Then just try to get it lined up as best as you can. Then before we bolt the winch down, we want to grab the rope, put the winch into free spool mode, and we want to take the winch rope and feed it through the fair lead we just previously installed. Just pull it through just like that. Then we're going to get our winch lined up. There's two sets of holes. We're going to want to use the outermost holes because we are using a 4,500 pound winch today. So we're going to grab our hardware. We're going to take our lock washer put it down onto the head of the bolt and we're going to take a washer, lay it up against the lock washer, then we're going to thread it into the bottom of the winch. 
Just want to get a couple threads. You don't want to tighten any of them up yet because you're probably going to have to rotate the winch around. I like to start my bolts across from each other. That way it centers up the winch good. So we did that front corner on the driver's side. Now we're going to come over to the passenger side and do the rearmost corner. This hole right here. It can be a little tight on the passenger side because the shock and everything's still in place. For ease of access, you could remove the shock. Next, we're gonna remove the hood. And we'll just set it aside. We're gonna mount our solenoid and the factory indentions located directly below the bus bar. There'll be four of them. So we're gonna grab our solenoid and our hardware. On our hardware, we need to make sure that we have a lock washer up against the head of the bolt, then a washer going up against the solenoid. So we're going to feed our solenoid down here, start getting it mounted up. One quick tip that can help you for getting your bolt started into these indentions is just run them in and out a couple times on each of the holes. That way they thread in there by hand a little bit easier for you. We'll just go ahead and get all four bolts started. And as soon as we have them all started, we'll go ahead and start tightening them up. So in your kit, you're gonna have two bundles of wire. We went ahead and cut down the wire just because it was gonna be excessive for where we have our solenoid mounted. We send the provided connectors and heat shrink for you to do this. So since we've already done this, we're gonna go ahead and take our wire that's gonna to go to the positive side of our winch and attach it to the blue post on the solenoid. Now we're gonna do the same thing, attaching it to the winch on the negative side but on the solenoid, we're gonna attach it to the yellow post. When you go to attach your wire to the winch, first you wanna make sure that you're attaching the ground to the ground indicated on the side of the winch here, as well as the positive to the positive. Then you'll just wanna remove your nut, as well as one of the washers. You'll leave one on the stud Then you'll just want to attach your connection. Reinstall one of the washers, as well as the nut, and then fully tighten. Next, we're gonna wire in the power supply to our solenoid. This machine has already been wired up to have the key on accessory, the ground, and the hot from directly from the battery. If your machine's not wired up like this, you're gonna have to run your wires from the solenoid to the battery. So we have our ground wire here. We're gonna attach the ground wire to the black post on the solenoid. Once it's attached on the solenoid, we're gonna remove the screw on the bus bar, the center screw. We're gonna slide the wire onto the center stud and then we'll just go ahead and tighten our connections. Then for the red wire, our hot wire, we're gonna to go to the red post on the solenoid and then connect it to the post on the far right side. This will be our all time hot or directly from the battery power. Next, we're gonna take the provided keyed on power source wire and attach it to the solenoid on this end. We're attaching it to the wire that's coming off of the solenoid. It'll be red as well. You just want to make sure it makes a good connection. And then we need to power this on with the keyed on source. Again, so our machine's already been equipped with a bus bar that has the accessory keyed on, the ground, and the all time hot from the battery. If your machine does not, you're going to have to use a test light. You go in to the wiring of the machine and find a keyed on power source. But today we're just going to attach our wire right here on the far left post. So, what we're going to do. We're going to hold it up to see how long we need the wire. That looks about right there, so we're just going to go ahead and make a cut. Go ahead and strip the wire down. We 
we're just going to be using a small connector here. And we're just going to crimp it down. We're just going to attach it directly to this far left stud. Next, we're going to grab our Y splitter and attach it to the connection coming off of the solenoid. I just want to line up the pins. You just want to make sure the pins are lined up. Then you also want to thread this nut down on here until it's tight. And we're going to go ahead and attach our wireless receiver for our wireless remote. Again, same thing, make sure the pins are lined up and just thread this nut down. This is a point where you can mount this anywhere you'd like. We like to mount it up as high as we can and we like to make sure that this blue wire is sticking straight up. So where we're gonna be mounting it today, we're gonna kinda of run it underneath the factory shock bracket here. Just kinda of get everything tucked in nicely and neat. We're just going to mount it right here. All you have to do is just take a zip tie, run it in between these two wires, and then just fasten it down to the frame. And then you can just take this, just kind of angle it towards the front of the machine just so it kind of sticks up towards the front. Or you could tie it up, you know, there's really, you just need to make sure that this is facing up, that way you can get the maximum amount of reach on your wireless remote. So we're just gonna kind of sit it right here on this frame rail. We're gonna take another zip tie, just zip tie it in place. The next thing we're going to do is remove the two screws securing the dash to the machine. We'll go ahead and remove these and then we'll just push the dash inward towards the machine and then just let it hang. Once we've done this, we can go ahead and grab our hardwired winch controller. We're going to take this connector, which is going to connect to our Y splitter, and feed it through the grommet located directly down from here, right here. And we're just going to feed it through, and we'll connect it to the Y splitter. Just the same as we did for the wireless remote receiver. Just plug that right in. Thread the nut on there. And then this is the point where you decide if you want to use the hardwired switch or if you'd like to go and use one of our Super ATV winch rocker switches that you can pick up from superatv.com. Today we're going to show you how to do both. If you are going to use the hardwired switch, you'll want to feed your wires straight down. So if you can see, you'll just want them to go straight down to the floorboard of the machine and then we're gonna head into the machine and show you what to do next. So the next step is gonna to be to find the location where you would like to mount the hardwired rocker switch. You can take this bracket, mount it onto the back side of the hardwired rocker switch. You could drill a hole right here, right here, you know, anywhere you'd like. And then you would take the Allen headed hardware, put the bolt through on this side, and then put a nut on the bottom side. And then you would just wanna tie all your wires up out of the way. But we're not going to be doing that today because today we're going to be showing you how to install one of our winch rocker switches. You're going to want to cut a hole in your dash big enough that your winch rocker switch will fit in. Once you've done this, you're going to go ahead and pop your dash back forward. And 
grab your hardwired switch. You're just going to want to go ahead and cut the end off of it, just like that. And we're going to start taking the wire from that hardwired switch and feeding it through the hole that we just previously cut in the dash. And you'll just want to feed all that through there. And then we'll cut this down the length as well. The next step is going to be to get a keyed on power source wire. We have the keyed on power source wire from our solenoid, our excess. We're going to put one eyelet connector on it to connect it to the bus bar. We're going to go ahead and crimp that on. We're just going to attach it to the bus bar on the far left post, which is going to be your keyed on accessory post. We're not going to fully tighten it because we're just kind of mocking it up right now to see how much wire we're going to have to cut off. So then we're just going to start feeding our wires through the grommet. I'm just going to pull it all the way through until it's tight. Then we're going to feed it through the hole and the dash where the rocker switch is gonna be. We're just gonna leave that there and then we're gonna do the exact same thing for a ground wire. So we're gonna go from the center post on the bus bar and then run it down through the grommet and out through the rocker switch hole. Once you have a keyed on accessory wire, a ground wire, and the hard wired rocker switch wires fed through the hole that we popped in the dash, we're gonna go ahead and move the dash back to where it's gonna be located. Make sure all our wires are pulled out as far as they can go, just like that. And then we're going to head on into the machine. So once we have all our wires pulled through, we're going to go ahead and trim each wire down to size. I usually like to keep, you know, a foot of extra wire, you know, maybe a little less, just so you don't have to be right up here trying to wire, you know, put connectors on. So right here, we're just going to go ahead and cut all these wires straight across. We're going to go ahead and start stripping all the wires down. That way we can put connectors on each of them. Then for all four of these wires, the ground wire, the blue wire, the brown, and the green with the yellow stripe, you're going to connect blade connectors. These can be picked up at any local hardware store or anything like that. So we're just going to go ahead and connect them to each of these wires. Grab our crimps. Crimp it down and make sure that we've made a good connection. Pull on them a little bit, make sure the wire doesn't move, and then do that for the rest of the three wires. We have all our connectors on all of them except for our keyed on power source wire. We're going to want to get a piece of wire about six inches long and then cut it right in the middle. So now we have two pieces of wire here. We're going to want to go ahead and strip them on both sides. So there's one that's stripped and ready to go. We're going to do the same thing for this other one. So we have both sides of our wire stripped. On one end, we're going to connect a blade connector just like we did the other pieces of wire. Make sure our connection is good and tight. Make sure our wire doesn't want to pull out. We'll do the same thing for this other three inch wire we have. So once we have our two connectors crimped onto our three inch pieces of wire, we're going to go to our key on accessory wire. We're going to tie all three wires in together, the two brand new ones we just put together. And then the keyed on, you just want to twist these up as tight as you can get them. And you're going to get one bigger blade connector. Slide all three of the wires in there together. 
Make sure they're all fully seated in there. We're going to get our crimps. Crimp it down nice and tight. So once we have all of our connections made, we're just going to go through with the heat gun. And we're using insulated connectors, so we're just going to go ahead and shrink all these down to the wire on each of these. So now we're going to grab our rocker switch. And if you look on the rocker switch, they're labeled. The left side with three prongs is one, two, and three. So what we're going to do, we're going to take the most recently connection made, which is going to be the three wires coupled together, the accessory hot, and then these two three inch wires we made. We're going to take one of them, attach it to one. It doesn't matter what order they go in, as long as the big one, the keyed on accessory wire is going to the center, just like this. So all three connections are made there, just like that. Then we're going to grab our ground wire, and it's going to go to the very top post on the other side, which will be labeled 7. And then the rest of these three are going to be four, five, and six. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this wire right here, the yellow and the green, and put it on spade four. The blue wire is going to go to spade five, and then the brown is going to go to spade six. So once we've had all our connections made, we're going to go ahead and slide our rocker switch into the hole that we cut out on the dash. Then once we got it in there, we'll just turn our key on and the rocker switch should illuminate. And then you go ahead and you can check it by clicking in and then out. And our winch is working. We're going to go ahead and shut it off, remove the key. So now what we're going to want to do, we're going to put our screws back in our dash, reinstall our hood. And then we're going to go ahead and mount up our clevis hook, pull strap, and stop block. We're just going to slide our winch rope cover back a little bit. We're going to remove the pin from the clevis hook, slide the pin through, take our cotter pin, put it in there, and then just bend it away from itself. Just like that. We'll take our pull strap, slide it on there, and the stop block. We'll just want to push this little center piece out, just like that. Slide it onto the rope. Make sure that the Super ATV is facing forward. Reinstall it just like that. And that's how super easy it is. Install Super ATV's winch and winch mount on this Polaris Razor 1000. For more information on this winch or winch mount or any of Super ATV's great products, give us a call at 855-743-3427 or check us out online at superatv.com. Thanks for watching and have a great day.